Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. We, we, we are sold out. Uh, we are restricted on our numbers by the size of this room, and we are just delighted everybody's here. We'll accommodate people to come in today. We've got vouchers they can eat in the dining room, and we'll do all sorts of things to, to get it going and make sure everybody has a great time. Um, I want to thank all our sponsors, and I hope all of you guys get a chance to go around and visit the people in here as well as out there. Uh, I especially want to thank our platinum sponsors, uh, Bound, Esri, Inograph, and Waypoint, and our gold sponsors, Fountain Spatial and Latitude Geographics. Um, our attendance is up 40% from last year. It was way beyond our, our wildest expectations. Uh, we're pretty damn excited. It's going to be a little cozy, but you're going to have a good time. More chance to network. Um, I have a bunch of announcements here. Uh, for people who need to use the wireless, uh, the access code is P S A V. It's P is in Pennsylvania, S is in uh, say San Francisco, uh, <laughs> A is in Albany, and V is in uh, Victoria. So if you've looked, uh, it, it, you know we try to cut down on, on a lot of stuff. You've got one great document that's been produced by John Barge, uh, and, and you know this is our paper. Uh, everything else is is on the app, and Technogenics uh, put that app together. We're really excited. It's the first time we've ever done an app, and we hope you guys get a chance to take advantage of it. And we're going to look at some of the statistics afterwards and see how you used it, so maybe we can learn more. Uh, the conference itself has been changed since past years. As you remember, a long time ago, what we used to do was have all uh, presentations that were volunteered by, by people that submitted it. Uh, and then last year, we went to invited speakers only. And this year, we're doing a combo. First day is uh, all invited speakers. Second day is uh, abstracts and things that have been submitted by, uh, by people from across the state. Give you a little bit of both. Um, one of the... Uh, one of the things we are doing this morning will be all in this room. It's going to be plenary. We're going to have um, uh, Alan Leidner, our president of the GIS Association, speak. Bill Johnson, the New York State Geographic Information Officer, speak. We'll take a break. We're going to have Jack Levis from UPS do the keynote. I'm all excited about that. And then we're going to go to lunch. And lunch will be served out there, but you'll be eating back here. So I just, just so you guys get an idea of, of the rhythm, we try to incorporate a lot of networking time. I mean, how many people got a chance to go to uh, Jacob and Anthony's last night? Because that was really a lot of fun. And it was a really intimate setting. And uh, we hope we can achieve the same kind of thing tonight at, at the reception here. Um, one of the things that, that uh, I wanted to do um, is to just give you an idea of what goes into this. We've spent a year putting this together. Uh, feels like we did it all in the last four weeks, but we really started, we did, a, we did an RFP, we, we contracted with uh, Delaney uh, Meeting and Event Management. They've done a really super job for us. But the people on the committee, and I'd like them to stand um, as I go through that, because they have been working on this, we met almost every week the entire year. Um, and so, um, now I'm a co-chair of the committee, uh, Bruce Oswald, Vern LeClaire is a co-chair, and then uh, Vern did stand, and then John Barge, uh, Mickey Dietrich, Krista Hay was out front, Eric Herman, Bill Johnson, Lindy Quackenbush, Susan Nixon, and Tom Sears. These are the people that brought this together, and they really deserve a round of applause. perspective, a special thanks to uh, Cindy Sherwood for uh, Delaney uh, event management. Uh, she really helped us out significantly this year to cover a lot of the details. And then lastly, uh, all our uh, communications that Carol Zolwick and her team does, that's, that's just great as well. Okay, uh, I feel like I have a couple of more announcements, but I can't find them in front of me. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's because of the really the end here, I apologize. Uh, so one of the other things we did this year was to uh, um, ask our platinum sponsors to do workshops in, as, as we went through the conference. So each of them uh, has agreed and is doing a workshop for us. 
Um, they've all given me descriptions of what they what they are going to do in here. I'm going to screw this up royally. But um, uh, at any rate, starting uh, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, um, Waypoint uh, will be doing a, a session on GPS. And uh, Jonathan will do a little bit of a presentation. And then he's going to uh, do an Ask the Doctor thing. You've got a bad device or something you can't figure out, they'll take care of it for you. So that's a really good thing. Uh, Intergraph has got theirs tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, they're going to be giving away over 25 licenses for, for their software. So that's something. And these are all taking place in High Rock out here. Um, then at 1 o'clock, uh, Bound, who kind of stole the show this year, is going to be doing um, a little session with, with their staff and, and letting you know what they do. But they also have a little thing called an ice cream social going on right after lunch. So mm -hmm. sometimes you win. Um, uh, and, then, and then lastly, um, we've got Esri uh, kind of batting clean up at uh, 2.45. Uh, they're going to be going uh, through their latest uh, platform capabilities, um, opportunity to connect with their high-tech staff. Uh, well, maybe not all of their high-tech, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and hopefully you get some new tips and tricks and things out of them. So we're really excited about that. We hope you guys get a chance to sit in and, and, and listen to all of them. And we thank them for their support. Um, and now, and now I'm going to stop. I'm going to introduce our, our first speaker of the day, uh, Alan Leitner, who's the president of the New York State GIS Association. For those of you who don't know Alan, um, he's a senior associate with uh, Oops Alan Hamilton. Uh, I knew him when he was an assistant commissioner and director of the citywide GIS utility for New York City. He was basically my counterpart uh, in New York City. I've known him for about 12 years. Um, you know, at that time, my respect for this guy's commitment to GIS and, I don't know, his compassion. I mean, he's just, he's, he's just got a compassion for humanity. He's just, he's a flaming liberal. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's great. Uh, he's done an outstanding job this year as president of the GIS Association, and that will be welcome out. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. It's good to see everyone all together after our near-death experience over the last four weeks. Uh, but this has really worked out tremendously. I'm happy to be here to balance the political spectrum with Bruce. So I think we really show an even political keel uh, through this conference. Um, I'd like to introduce, uh, you know Bruce, Bill Johnson, GIO of the state of New York. We're very Delighted to have him here to make the State of the State message. Um, have Julie Tolar, who is the going to be president um, tomorrow. So welcome, Julie, and we look forward to your presidency. And even though it is not official, official, we have Susan Nixon here, who is running unopposed for incoming president. So we wanted her up here to say hi to everyone and. Um, and for you to see her and to understand the leadership in the coming year. Um, I also want to take, like Bruce, take this opportunity to uh, have uh, the conference committee work tremendously hard across the year, but at the same time, all the association committees and their committee members and the officers uh, worked hard as well, maintaining the organization and building the organization. So I would like everyone who's on a conference committee who's a conference chair or an officer to please stand. There's got to be a couple of us here. And if you're a committee member, stand. And I just like a round of applause because there was a tremendous amount of work done just on the day-to-day -day Made my job lots easier. Okay, and also, Make sure to say thank you to the sponsors because they are really helped to make this possible. So spend time with them, go to their booths, talk to them, make them welcome, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to get started with uh, my presentation. And, um, you know, um, I always aspired to be the president of something. <laughs> I have to admit that, you know, I had my own grandiose dreams. Um, not to be realized, however, um, you know, one day last year, Bruce gave me a call and um, 
he said, um, you know, would you like to run for president? And, you know, I trusted him. I knew him for quite a number of years. He seemed friendly enough. So I agreed, I agreed to run for president. But I realized that, you know, I'm in New York City, and the association covers the entire state. And I have to admit, a certain lack of knowledge about the rest of the state beyond the Hudson River and above the northern border of New York. So this is sort of my view of New York State a year ago. And I did get some things confused. I mean, uh, one day I did want to see the Adirondack Mountains, and I think maybe after the conference I'll take a spin around them. Um, you know, if I can find them, maybe someone will direct me. So, you know, I knew I needed an infusion of wisdom and knowledge about the state in order to be a successful president. Um, and luckily, Bruce had the proper technique, you know, the Albany mind mill for, for getting me up to speed and getting me knowledgeable, uh, the kind of knowledge I really needed about people and what's going on in the state um, to be successful. Um, nevertheless, I was still apprehensive about how people upstate would view me. So different images flashed through my mind about, you know, what people might be thinking when they thought of me from New York City. Um, but when I got up to Scandiapolis, where I finally assumed the position of, of president last year, I found everyone was really glad to see me. <laughs> so it was you know, like a homecoming. I felt, you know, really accepted. Um, and, you know, since we were all sort of in the same boat together, um, it wasn't too long before we were all pulling like one. So, um, you know, this has been a really marvelous year. Everybody has worked hard, really hard, um, and uh, I think we've accomplished a lot. So I want to just quickly review for you, uh, some of you may not be aware of, of some of those things. Um, firstly, um, our membership, you know, it varies. About June 30th of this year, we actually hit the 500 member mark. And then, because everybody's membership expires at the end of June, we drop down to about 125. But since then, through vigorous action and um, you know, really getting in people's faces and begging and pleading, we're now back up to about, I just heard the number, about 492. So with any luck, we got one more? Three. Uh, we're counting. You know, we want to make a bit of a fuss about the, the 500 who, who comes on board. So you may be that person. So if you're not a member, sign up now. You may be number 500 and entitled to a drive through the Adirondacks. Um, uh, another big achievement has been the conference committee taking over NYG O'Connor. And I think the results speak for themselves just from the first minutes of this conference. I think we're in for a very special experience. And I want to thank Bruce and Vern and the whole committee for really making it happen, and for and to Delaney as well. Um, I want to also point out that if you've watched our website that Carol Zoeg and um, her committee run, you have seen over the course of the year steady improvement, enrichment um, of features and content and she's done a magnificent job as we've grown, that website has really grown. Uh, also, uh, with the leadership of a Rich Quarto Mine, we put on more webinars and training than we've ever done before, I think by a multiple. We put in at least 10 different events, and we hope to continue at that pace over the year because it's proven to be an extremely popular thing with our membership across the state, and we just want to keep driving home the idea of we're creating value for you. Um, and in fact, we want to hear more about that. At tomorrow's um, session, business session, we really want to hear from you about um, where we should be going and how we can be increasing and improving the value of the association. Our legislative committee, Joe Jones couldn't be here, Bruce is on that committee, co-chairs it, uh, really was protecting our backs uh, all year long, and we really appreciate um, their efforts there. Um, we, uh, Ann Deacon, 
uh, expanded the academic committee so that we're now outreaching to every single academic institution in the state that has a GIS program. We want to get at their professors. We want the students involved. And in fact, this uh, conference is going to have the presence of about 50 students who we've specifically subsidized and encouraged to come. They are the future of our profession, and we've, we've attracted them to this event and hopefully to many future events. And I think there's going to be lightning sessions by the students and so forth. So we're, we're very glad to expand uh, that, that part of, of our association. Uh, we've also put a lot of effort into building our relationship with regional associations, and we want to continue that. And we understand that we've only got the membership of about one-third of the total membership of all our regional associations. So we know that there's plenty of room for us to expand. We want to smoke the pipe of peace with our regions. We want to make friends with them, and we want to give them a reason to encourage their membership to join the association. We're also, with my uh, Zolik, um, uh, Zoltek, uh, formed a private sector committee, and I sort of work in with Julie O'Brien uh, on, on a federal committee that we hope will uh, be organized sometime during the coming year. So we've been very, very, very active. We've been working on your behalf. We've been trying to create value as the uppermost thing in our minds. And I think that this is just the beginning of this association. Um, uh, one of the reasons I do is because uh, I believe in something that I call GIS exceptionalism, or another way, a simpler way of saying it is spatial is special. Um, I think GIS is a, a, a uniquely and specially powerful information technology. In, in particular, I think it really fulfills the IT revolution that we've all gone through in the last 30 years, and that it's not those isolated stovepipes of data, but GIS actually links data together and allows us to exploit the, the, uh, the knowledge in that data that otherwise would remain hidden. And I think that nobody else, no other technology really does that. And I think we need to blow our own horns a little more frequently about it because it's really a sort of unique capability. Additionally, GIS is a really is probably among the most social of the technologies because to do GIS right, you have to network, you have to know what your partners in adjoining geographies are doing and the kind of data they have. You have to be able to work together to combine data to maximize the value of GIS. Um, and I think that the social nature of GIS melds perfectly with a new revolution in social media. So I think we are at the right place at the right time. Additionally, I know that GIS generates terrific return on investment. And I think it's very important we get the word out that there's millions and even billions of dollars worth of savings if you do GIS right. And additionally, new revolutions of technology all seem to be playing into our hands. And let me just briefly illustrate some of those points. Um, this is a map, uh, Julie and uh, Michelle Debbie are responsible for putting together the most comprehensive map of our regions. And there may be some tweaks, so don't get upset if we didn't, you know, get your block in the right order. Uh, there's a little gerrymandering going on here, um, but it can be corrected. Um, but this just shows you just how social GIS in New York State is. There are many, many organizations, they're really the building blocks of the state association, and it just goes to show you that given half a chance, if you're in GIS, you want to clump together with your colleagues and get something going. Um, this is an old slide that I've done. I used to have to create slides like this to survive in New York City and from the cruel law of the Office of Management and Budget, but basically it shows about seven or eight of the killer apps that were not all by me, but implemented in New York City that produced multi-million dollar and even billion dollar savings. And uh, I just will highlight one of them, which is CompStat. It's, it's pretty typical because, you know, the police department would never say that GIS was responsible for the reduction in murder in New York City from a high of 2,200 
to now a number that's hovering around 400. So that's 15, 16, 1700 lives a year are saved. Is it all GIS? No. But if you ask anyone, could you have done that? Could you have done CompStat, intelligence policing? Could you have done it without GIS and the GIS analytical capacity? They would say, well, no. And if you grant that a life is worth about a million dollars, and you're saving $1,500 a year, so I think mathematically that comes out to $1.5 billion a year of savings because you're not getting all those murders, what percentage of that can be credited to GIS? No one's ever done that calculation, and I'm willing to accept 5%. And 5% grant to GIS means we're saving probably over the course of the last 20 years at least a billion dollars. We've got to do analysis like this, even when GIS is submerged inside a, uh, a larger application that includes many other components, often it won't run without GIS. And we've got to claim credit on that, because only with that credit do we have the credibility to build better and better systems. Um, also, new waves of technology are coming, and they all seem to favor and to be integratable with GIS. So we know that the, when the latest smartphones come out and proliferate, we're going to be able to tie into them and create applications. And there's just, um, you know, we just can't see the end to a stream of innovations and technologies that are going to continue to exploit the power of GIS. So we've got everything going for us, but, you know, we still sometimes have a problem um, with recognition and the acceptance of exactly what we do. And I want to illustrate that briefly through the work that was done during Super Storm Sandy, sort of like the good and the not so good. So when Sandy came, GIS in the form of NOAA, you know, predicted where that storm would go three days in advance and also predicted at least two days in advance exactly where the storm surge uh, would come how intense it might be. So that was all, everyone was taking action days in advance to, um, to minimize the effects of Sandy. So again, GIS was there. You can't have NOAA and you can't have these kind of predictions without GIS. We, in the GIS community, in this listing, which you can't really read, but includes quite a number of people in the audience here, prior to Sandy, two days, three days before Sandy, we organized a Sandy GIS working group, much better than we did during 9-11. Um, and we got everyone talking and exchanging information prior to the storm, mailing out HZIP gold data and uh, forming groups uh, uh, surrounding the EOCs of the different counties that were going to be affected. So we had already done so much networking that we were able to pull a hundred person committee together within the region, you know, within a matter of hours. <clears throat> um, FEMA did a terrific job during Sandy, better than anything we've seen before as far as I'm concerned. They had <clears throat> the FEMA Geo Platform um, and um, they were immediately in the air following Sandy. As soon as the clouds cleared away, FEMA had planes up in the air taking photos and then posting those photos almost instantaneously on the geo platform before and after shots. Thousands, tens of thousands of shots were there accessible both to the public and to the local governments. And this was like a revolution in the way disasters were being handled. And we have Julie O'Brien here, FEMA, and thank you publicly for the great job you did coordinating <clears throat> and supporting us with this new technology. Um, HSIP Gold Data, it's a federal database of infrastructure. Uh, prior to Sandy, we were aware of the key infrastructure in the city and just how vulnerable it might be. The arrow points to the East 13th Street substation, uh, which is a substation that controls power south of 34th Street in Manhattan between 34th Street and the Battery. And we also had FEMA flood maps. So actually we knew well in advance that if there was going to be a 100 year flood, and certainly Sandy brought that to us, that it was going to inundate the substation and many other facilities right along the coast, the Gold Coast 
of Manhattan, if you will. So this was all good. It showed that we in the GIS community had developed a whole series of tools that enabled us to mobilize for Sandy and then to respond to Sandy as never before uh, to a disaster. However, there were problems in that, yes, they listened to GIS as Sandy approached and as Sandy struck, but the knowledge, the GIS knowledge of those vulnerable infrastructures that might be affected by a hundred year flood, um, we were not as effective as we might have been in motivating action uh, to protect some of that key infrastructure uh, and some of the key communities that were affected by Sandy. And this is a shot of the East 13th Street substation. If you've never been down there, it is massive. It's two whole large city blocks. And on the night that Sandy hit, the surge hit, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, the arcing, the electric arcing as water inundated that substation. It blacked out Manhattan south of 34th Street, and power was out in the financial district for four days plus. So that was really sort of a, a worst case uh, scenario. And in fact, the inundation map, which you see lower left, conformed precisely to the FEMA floodplain map. So it was no mystery. We all knew this was going to happen, but we were unable to motivate preventive activity well prior to Sandy. Um, as an example of a cascading effect, this is NYU Medical Center, one of the most renowned medical centers in the country. It is also in the floodplain. When power to East 30th, 13th Street cut out, their backup power supply had to be turned on. However, um, they too were hit by the surge, and guess where their backup power supply was? You know, it was in the basement. So all those basement levels at NYU Medical Center, plus the UPS, was knocked out, flooded. Their losses were $750 million to a $1 billion just in this one facility alone. Um, and it, the little inset there is a, a shot of uh, the ambulances that were lined up along First Avenue taking incubator babies and the sick away from NYU Medical Center because it couldn't operate without power. This too was something with a little foresight, a little belief in GIS might have been avoided by just setting up barriers to stop what I think was probably not a very high level of water from inundating the basement um, and flooding that facility out. Similarly, um, entrances to tunnels and subway tubes were within the flood zone in Lower Manhattan. We knew that. Everyone knew those would flood in a major event. Um, and yet, there was no barriers put up in anticipation that such an event might happen. And again, GIS basically wrote the book on this. We knew it would happen, but action could not be, was not taken, which is a pity because this could have been a billion dollar savings or multi-billion dollar savings and we just couldn't realize that. Um, so, um, I think that um, what it shows us is that we need to gain greater credibility and greater acceptance that the unique truth that we bring to the table has to be listened to. And I think, now turning it back to the New York State GIS Association, we are in a position to help lift GIS to the next level. Um, we create integrated communities of practitioners, which you really need across state, local, federal, private, academic, and we share knowledge and we share data. Um, we advocate for GIS to assume its rightful place in the order of things. And I think we have a unique power to advocate because we're not tied to an institution that might prevent us or discourage us from voicing our opinions. Um, and I think we can play a role identifying and publicizing GIS benefits. Um, and I think we're in a particularly advantageous position for the future with all the technology coming in, with our association growing. And I just want to point out, it's one of my favorite shots, is we also have a little political, you know, in at this particular point in time, because I don't know if any of you know Gail Brewer, uh, she is now the incoming borough president of Manhattan. She has been a friend and advocate of GIS 
from its very inception in New York. So it's nice to have good friends in high places. And I think when you take all these factors together, I think we have an excellent year on the way. Um, questions to ponder. So we're going to have a, a meeting tomorrow. And I haven't forgotten, Julie, that I have to bring you up here to see. Um, we have uh, questions to ponder for tomorrow's business meeting. Please keep these in your mind. How do we raise awareness through the association of the unique power of GIS? How do we, as an organization, serve you better? And how should we seek to expand our membership, becoming maybe a thousand member or even more than that association? So um, I want to leave you with, with that message. Think about it for tomorrow. Please come to the business meeting where all the committee chairs will be making their reports. Um, and before we turn it to Bill, I did want to specifically introduce and, and bring to the podium Julie Tolar, who will be incoming president as of tomorrow, to say just a couple of words to you. So, Julie. Good morning, everybody. Um, I feel like between Ale and Bruce, we've pretty much covered everything, so I just want to make this pretty quick so we can get Bill up here. Um, I just want to personally thank everybody for attending um, and for taking time out of your busy schedules to come here and join us. We really do appreciate it. Um, we've kind of gone through this already. Um, so I will be taking over as president of the association at the business meeting tomorrow. Um, I'm really hoping that everybody will plan on attending. We really want to hear from everybody um, about what you want to see in the coming year. And I also just want to talk a little bit about what my plans are for some stuff that we'd like to do next year. Um, I feel like we've pretty much covered everything here. Um, I do also just want to thank the conference committee personally as well um, for all the work that they've done. You guys have done a great job. I think that we have a great conference in store for you guys um, today and tomorrow. And that's going to be it for me for right now, so we can get on to Bill. Okay? Thank you.